What'd you say? Bob, there's hearing aids. You can try and we'll buy the batteries tomorrow. I can't tomorrow. hear you. You will? Yeah. Well, that's a good grandpa. Here's your hearing aids. I'd allow you to do my hit batteries. We didn't do much uh, bailing. We did it all by hand. Did you? From the ground, huh? Weird. No. No. Bob? No bail. No. Why don't you move that uh, hand? I don't believe that. Until Not four or five now. Really, honey? New ear. Come here, Grandpa. Will this thing Where take it? Probably not. I don't smoke. You don't smoke? No. <laughs> no, I can't see. Damn. You like them? Yeah. I'm just having a hard time with that glasses, huh? Alright. Trifocals. Mm. Okay, you're a good camera person. So yeah, yeah. You know, I wasn't. Okay. Mm. What are you doing, Mama? It's hot. Mm-hmm. Want me to help you there? Look for Depperman. He's a man of action. Affirmative action. You're not in the Together lights. Together we can rebuild Wilkinsburg. Scoot back. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm having a lot of chill folks in this, too. How it comes? This, there was this young fella that he had a girlfriend, and, oh, he, he really thought the world went all over, but he couldn't get nowhere with her because she was so religious. And always, when he tried to make out with her, she'd say, Oh, no, I'd have to have permission from the Lord. And so that, that went up. on and on. And so finally, this one day he had a date with her. <laughs> and uh, so he had a good friend. And he says to his friend, you got to be God tonight. You get up there on that hill where I'm going to park underneath it, and you be God up there in that tree. Okay, so... He wined her and dined her and took her out and parked under the tree and tried again. And she said, oh, I'd have to have permission from the Lord. So uh, pretty soon he looked up and he says, oh, Lord up above, may I, may I screw the one I love. And the voice from up above came down to the earthly creature down below. Put her in as far as he'll go. If there is more than enough for thee, get me out of this goddamn tree. <laughs> okay, Grandpa, you gotta tell us the next joke. Yeah. I want this one. She offered her honor. He honored her offer. And all night long he was on her and off her. <laughs> I like the way he does that bum part. You tell a joke, Susie. Come on, it's your turn now. Oh, heck. Come on. What was that one joke I really liked? Oh, that wasn't much. There was this guy, and he always came in the same bar every day. And he'd say, Doc, I'd like a daiquiri. Well, Doc said, how about a hickory dip? Oh, I could. <laughs> Try it again. Take it from the start. Okay, the bartender. From the top. He, 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 his name, he would always, Doc would always go in there and he'd order a hickory daiquiri every day. Well, this time, take it from the top. The bartender said, How about a hickory daiquiri, Doc? He has sprinkled some hickories. <laughs> and that's on top. Forget it. I don't know. I didn't, <laughs> I don't, I need to rehearse the time. Go on. <laughs> Grandpa, joke time. Huh? You got to tell a joke. No. Yeah, you do. I don't know any. Sure you do. You know plenty of jokes. Here, why don't you tell your joke to Grandpa? <laughs> Go on. I don't know any. Tell your joke oh, first. Get Grandpa warmed up. Go ahead. She offered an honor. 
No, 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 no. No one an Aggie is, don't you? I do know of that. Yeah, you say they went to bed. Wait, wait, how did, wait, we got to figure out how it started. I thought they was going to go to bed, and he said, well, let's, on our 50th anniversary. They went on a trip. They went on a trip, and they said, let's go do what we did 50 years ago on our anniversary. And he said, oh, mm -hmm. so he put his hand Not on it. Not on their anniversary, Dad. Well, that then was you the, tell the story. They, this couple went on, on a trip, and uh, uh, because it was their anniversary, they were going to celebrate. So, okay, they got... No, maybe you can tell it from there. No, you tell it. Yeah, so anyhow, he says, he says, well, honey, let's do, let's do tonight what we did on our anniversary, 40 years ago or 50 years ago, I don't know which one. And, no, that's the part you know, and I don't, I don't know. He says something about they were going to do it, and then he says, what did he say to my dad? Well, well, I, I, he butts in, so let her put it Oh, no, I... Mm. He put his hand on her button, and then pulled around, and then he said, well, let's have a little. And she said, oh, my, she got an awful headache. Oh, that's all right, honey. He said, yeah, I don't think of that. He said, tomorrow morning, he said, I got washed clothes and all that. He said, oh, we'll be through before that time. I know, for an anniversary. He said, oh, we'll be through before that time. <laughs> tell your joke, honey. Tell my joke? My joke, seriously. But tell it the right way this time, with the you know word. <laughs> There's a bum standing outside a subway station, Grandpa, and he sees some young, dapper, well-dressed gentleman standing outside the subway. At any rate, he's watching this guy, and the guy's standing outside there, and he's waiting for a good-looking woman to come up the subway station. And she finds a woman that's walking up. And he looks, Your pardon? He says, particularly nasty weather. So, so he strikes up a conversation, and uh, next thing you know, he offers to buy her a drink, and they go walking down the street. The bum was pretty impressed. The next day, there's another guy dressed up, standing there. Same subway station. And a woman comes up out of the subway station, and he looks at her and he says, Tickle your ass with a feather. And she says, Pardon me? And he says, Particularly nasty weather. I Strike, strike up a conversation. They go walking off hand in hand again. The bum was so impressed, he decides that he's going to try this himself. God, that was slick. I have to try that myself. So the next day, he's standing up there, holding himself up, and some woman comes to the subway station and he, he goes, Jam a feather up your ass! <laughs> Fucking cold outside! He tried. <laughs> Honey, I'm... <laughs> Goody. Goody job. Five years. Let's not Maybe break this tradition. Well, <laughs> 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 anyhow, Santa Claus, he come down. <laughs> Hello? 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 Yeah. Duane, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I don't know. Oh, good. Anyhow... It's a little gal who wants Duane. Santa Claus... He uh, he had his bundle of toys and everything, and here he comes down the chimney to the fireplace, and right beside the fireplace was sitting the most beautiful blonde. And God, he just looked at her, and he went about his business, fell on the stockings, and she says, Santa, do you have to go? Can't you stay a while? And he says, ho, ho, got stockings to fill, you know. And so he was busy there, and pretty soon she got up, and she walked up to him and snuggled up against him and rubbed up against him. And she says, Santa, are you sure you have to go? Hey, hey, got to stay. Can't get up the chimney this way. <laughs> Why? <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> you have a heart on something? <laughs> <laughs> 
Black light. I'm gonna get the black light. Yeah.